I'm Inho Cho. I'm very happy to share our research outcome to the uh, broad data scientists and the researchers. And my team member is Jaegwon Kim, the professor of statistics, and my student Wee Cheng Yang. So we are all team of the Iowa State University, and this work is kindly supported by National Science Foundation. I want to talk about uh, our research outcome assumption-free general-purpose ultra-large incomplete data curing program. We call that UPFHDI. I'm going to tell you why uh, we call uh, that name as UPFHDI later on. But I want to, bef before beginning, I want to emphasize that uh, this program is assumption-free. That means uh, there is a weak uh, distributional assumption or uh, we don't require export level uh, assumption or knowledge and also it can be used for general data so it doesn't require any uh, specific data type so it can cure any uh, tabular shape uh, the uh, continuous or discrete or hybrid that is the combination of this continuous or discrete data set ultra large data means that it's also large instances so called big N and also high dimensional data, say a big P data. So we can tackle concurrently big N and big P. So we call that uh, ultra data. Uh, indeed, incomplete data is uh, everywhere. So in engineering and science and then social science and industry and any data, survey data, we can see always the incomplete data. For example, here I show the infrastructure engineering data set. So infrastructure engineering collect a lot of data using sensor, various sensors. So this table shows an example of hybrid data set from bridge and transportation sensor, uh, thanks to the Dr. Faris and Dr. Sharma. And the bottom one is the very expensive ex experimental data set from uh, structural engineering. So community of the researchers uh, these days accumulated database like this, but uh, uh, because it's an experiment, so it is inevitable to have the blank or missing part. And another example can be found in the uh, another area, so phenotype and genotype database. This is uh, thanks to Dr. Lawrence of another research group. So uh, we have a very brief, uh, brief uh, statistic, so there is a, a various uh, missing rate depending on the phenotype and then their uh, descriptor. So uh, it may damage the subsequent statistical inference or subsequent machine learning study if we don't take care of this kind of uh, missingness. First, I want to talk about naive remedy, how to handle then uh, missing data uh, these days. So widely used naive method in machine learning community. So they simply use the each variable's mean value. Mean value. So that means uh, they have the uh, each column of the data or each variable's data and take the mean of the observed value and to fill in the missing part. We call that mean-based naive method. Another one may be the deleting the entire unit instances which has missing value. For example, if we have a, a one row that has only one blank, one blank, then we simply delete. So many uh, statistical package or machine learning package, to the best of our, our knowledge, uh, they do this automatically. So they simply delete incomplete row. It can cause kind of uh, sometimes it's okay but sometimes in general we can call that uh, statistical problems resulting from this naive method. So basically if we delete then we can we can see the loss of substantial information and also those uh, naive methods may introduce unexpected bias because we simply use the mean value of observed information only. So, as a result of it, so may lead to low accuracy in machine learning and statistical prediction that, that are using the cured data set. 
so may mislead incorrect statistical inference or sometimes critical decision making. Uh, actually, in terms of theory and tools, we have a very powerful method. So one of the methods is so-called multiple imputation. So one of the most popular imputation method, and in in short, it creates m completed data set, kind of multiple uh, completed data set for full imputation uncertainty. So since the initial work by Dr. Rubin, extensive investigation have been conducted. So there are uh, many a multitude of uh, variants of this uh, work, so well-established method. However, researchers also found that there is some statistical difficulty So, in, in general use of multiple imputation. In the original formula based on the decomposition, so, but it requires it require some uh, condition. So we must satisfy this uh, as shown here the two times covariance matrix theta mi minus theta n should be zero. This condition is so-called congeniality. Congeniality. So uh, we have to satisfy congeniality condition or the self-efficient estimator condition uh, to uh, accurately or reliably use the multiple imputation method. But in general, it's very hard to certify. So it is ignored oftentimes. So uh, the, otherwise, the MI variance estimation may be inconsistent and considered biased, biased. So this is the challenges of the existing imputation method. They often require statistical or, uh, or and or the distribution assumption which are very difficult for general users, general researchers who are not expert in statistics or for the general data scientists who are uh, not familiar with that, that specific data set. Even with a good expertise, computation limit of them. So suppose if our data is very large, then to the best of our knowledge, there is no powerful tool for large data, large incomplete data oriented uh, imputation method. There are many uh, tools in the SAS or the R package, but uh, they are not suitable for curing very large data or ultra data. How can we tackle this challenge? So at the very beginning of the research, we have a kind of a discussion how to uh, tackle this problem. Then we find we found the solution from hot tech imputation method. Because hot tech imputation method has a lot of many strengths. It do not require it does not require self-efficient estimation condition or advanced statistical assumption. And also it does not uh, create artificial variable. But instead it use the real observation. And it does not require model or distributional assumption. It just look at the observed data, which is available data. So to seek to leverage and preserve the joint probability of the data already available. So we look at the data already available. So that's why we call that hot tech imputation. Actually, this method has been there for a long time. And then another branch is a fractional imputation. That means um, we use fraction, fractional weight for each observation to cure the data. So that's why we call that fractional imputation. So combination of hot tech and fractional imputation is very powerful and well studied so far. So just like a, a multiple imputation, we use the multiple imputed variable for each missing, missing variable. But a single data set is created after imputation. That means uh, after data curing, we always have one full, complete data set, not multiple data set. So that's very handy for the machine learning or statistical analysis. And fractional weight for the, of the observation assigned to the imputed value, so we can uh, clearly see the, how it, it impute because we have the data. We can get the fractional weight as a result. 
and replication method can be directly used for variance estimation. The uncertainty after the data curing, the uncertainty estimation is another issue we have to tackle. So um, uh, this method is very good to use the existing replication method, such as the jackknife method, or the, uh, as I will show you later on, the more uh, simple, the efficient way for the very large data set, variance estimation. So our group already developed and shared the serial version. Serial version, there is not an ultra-large data set version, but the, for you, for the decent site data is already available in the R package, and you can freely download from CRAN. The package name is FHDI, meaning Fractional Hot Deck Imputation. On that package, we, uh, we offer two methods. One is the fully efficient fractional imputation imputation we call FAFI. In general, it's unbiased method and then uh, replace the missing cell with all possible observed value. So we call that all possible donors for each missing value. But to save uh, computational efficiency, to uh, we select randomly a few selected donors. Among the possible all donors, we select a few random uh, donors. So by doing so, we can save a lot of computation time. So we call that FHDI, so Fractional Hot Deck Imputation. So I want to briefly talk about theory. So for the detailed theory, uh, we recommend to we uh, I recommend to for you to see our uh, referred papers there. But uh, I want to briefly touch about the basic setup. So here A is an index set of the size n drawn from a finite population index set, u. And uh, yi is the ith row of data matrix, so size of n times p. So global size n and then dimension is p. Each variable is categorized. Each variable is each categorized. We call that imputation cell creation. So if we have continuous variable, continuous variable, we discretize it or the categorize it into k categories, because it's very hard to tackle continuous variable as it is. We just categorize each variable into k categories based on the CDF, cumulative distributive function. So we call that categorized data set as G, and note it has G. But think about each row, each each instances, we have observation part and the missing part. That's why we have an observed observe part of categorized vector G and also missing part. We contain them. And also correspond associated index set is also decomposed as AR, AM. So AR is the index set of the uh, observation part and the AM is the missing part. So imputation cell is defined by the unique pattern. So think about after, think about we have an incomplete continuous or hybrid data set. It's a large matrix that is categorized into G. Categorized. And if you look at the distribution or the pattern of the G, we can see unique pattern of each row. So we can call it imputation cell. Imputation cell. So uh, basically we also assume that cell mean model, cell mean model, so each cell has the same mean and the uh, variance covariance matrix. So based on that setup, that we can find, we uh, can find the FAFI estimator, which is a fully efficient fractional imputation estimator. So basically, this is a basic equation uh, the y hat p fafi is the fafi estimator of y p, which is the, the uh, our target our target. So here, uh, using fraction, using fraction here, the w star is the fractional weight of j's donor for i's recipient. J's donor for i's recipient. We can get it from the later using expectation maximization scheme. 
But the heart is the central idea here is that we use all possible donors in FEFI. So delta PI means the if delta is the uh, the response index. So that is the if if we have observed value, then delta equal to one, and otherwise it's missing, then delta equal to zero, like that. So we can have this simple equation. But slightly differently, FHDI using the m possible donors for each missing cell, each missing cell. For the select for, to select the m donors, among the all possible donors, we use the probability proportional to size sampling. That is a random sampling uh, selection proportional to the the sampling weight there, Wij FFE. The slightly change the uh, FFE estimate FHDI estimator is given like this. So basically, this theory is based on uh, the form of finite mixture model. So we assume the conditional distribution as like this. And because uh, we have missingness, so the joint cell probability are unknown at the very beginning. So we use a modified expectation maximization algorithm to get the joint cell probability. So the expectation the step, E step here, and then M step is kind of maximization step. It's kind of iteration, iteration, to get the uh, to get the, the expectation maximization weight, joint cell probability. So later on, I'm gonna use the back and forth the toy example to give you some more sense of how how it works. So very simple toy example, which is available already in the R package as a default example. Think about uh, the dimension 4 and then size 100 instances matrix. So 100 times 4 matrices. And we generated some random missingness. So once again, our serial version, our package is already available in the CRAN. So, and the related uh, paper is available in our journal. They are all open. Okay, so you can uh, install FHDI and load library FHDI and then do the example. And let's see the, how it looks like, our toy example. So variable 1 has 42 missingness and variable 2, 34, variable 3, 18, variable 4, 11 missingness. After performing, after performing FAFI, after FAFI, uh, imputation. So this is the full result. This is the full result. So as, as shown in the uh, as shown in the red color here, red color here. So for the first uh, first uh, missing part, we have y three is missing. To cure that, the FAFI found that all possible donors are two, two possible donors. That's why we have fractional weight 0 0.5, and then possibly we have 2.88 or 2.49 for the missingness, the Y3. Second row, second row has uh, six, I'm sorry, five possible donors, maximum possible donor. It looks like uh, here we have Y1 is missing, so to cure. And then y, the third row, we have uh, six possible donors, six possible donors. So for the, because for the one missing part in the Y4, we can have uh, six possible donors. So basically, all possible donors, all possible donors are given here. Uh, contrarily, if we use FHDI, so you can control S op imputation equal to FHDI using the randomly selected five donors. Then using the same with the same toy example. You can confirm that as a two or five donors, but think about the third row here, third row. So previously we have six possible donors, but in the FHDI we have five. We just restrict our possible donors, restrict to save computational time. So there is a slight difference between the FFE and the FHDI. So we can control the option by this one as op imputation FHDI or FAFI here.
So after uh, discretization, I'm sorry, the categorization, so each variable, each variable is continuous, continuous. For example, row 1 has missingness at y3, row 2 has missingness at y1, y3 is missingness at the y4, as we have seen. But each variable, each column, each variable is continuous. So we have to categorize it, categorize it to make an imputation cell. So here, because it's two example, we set the k equal to 3. So for each variable, we need to categorize into them into three categories. So after categorization, we can see the imputation cell. Imputation cell, the first row has a 3, 2, 0, 3. 0 means the missing is. So as you see here, so it's kind of a pattern. We can see the pattern, missing pattern of this original data. So uh, to show you some sense, this, uh, this is the missing pattern. So for example here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2 means that only variable 4 is observed and then that observation categorized into 2 whereas 3 variables are all missing. To cure this pattern, to cure this pattern, we compare all possible donors by looking at the observed part. So here 1, 2, 3, row 3, 6, 8 can be a possible donor, can be a possible donor. By looking at, by comparing these uh, categorized uh, cells, we can select the donor, possible donors. And as I said before, we use the modified expectation maximization scheme for joint cell probability estimate. So this method is originally coined, uh, developed by Ibrahim, 1990, and then we just slightly modified. So um, for each missing pattern, the observation pattern, for example, the categorization, categorized matrix as 1111, the cell pattern should have this joint probability, or pattern, observation pattern, 1123 should have this kind of uh, probability like that. So for this two example, we have these uh, so 6 and then kind of 10, 10 uh, unique patterns, observation pattern. Each pattern have the joint cell probability after, after that modified EM algorithm. Obviously the sum should be 1. So in the toy example, we show how it helps how it helps the uh, following, following the uh, coefficient estimate. We just coefficient estimate. So if we use mean-based naive method, the intercept intercept is uh, has a standard error 0.3, but the FHDI has 0.25, FEFI has 0.25. It's way better than the naive method, and slightly. FEFI is better than FHDI. That's why we expect it, because FEFI used all possible donors and unbiased, but FHDI slightly biased because we select randomly, but it's a relatively good and way better than the naive method. And when we estimate slope, when we have to slope, so it's also confirmed the FEFI is always better, always better in terms of SI, standard error, and also the estimation. So we can confirm that FHDI is slight, fairly good, fairly good mimic of the FAFI. And as I said earlier, uncertainty is always the issue after the data curing. How can we measure or estimate the uncertainty about our data curing? So uh, in the package, the serial package, and then our package, the ultra large data package also has the variance estimation scheme because it's the computational efficiency and also the implementation we adopt Jack knife method basically delete one by one and estimate the uncertainty it's very straightforward so we have the Jack knife variance estimation estimator given here but 
I want to mention that how good the FHDI compared to FAFI. So in the theory, we our our group members show that uh, uh, there's asymptotic properties. Asymptotic property as n grows, the size grows, FHDI estimator approaches approaches to FAFI. So asymptotic properties FHDI estimator. So for large big data, FHDI can asymptotically replace FAFI. So FHDI has a strong computational efficiency compared to FAFI. So that's why we start uh, from FHDI to make a ultra large data oriented uh, data curing method. And this is another example we perform to show that the, here the ratio 1 means the good, good imputation. And then uh, we can confirm for the 14 variable and 19,000 a slight, slightly large realistic data appliance energy data set from Dr. Satin. Then we confirm that uh, this performance is pretty robust, pretty robust. Okay, then I want to move on to uh, parallel, ultra-large data oriented parallel fractional hot tag imputation. So we already make available for the R package on CRAN, but uh, as you will see, it requires a lot of memory and computational time. So the serial version package is not ideal to deal with uh, large or ultra-large data because of immense volume or too many variables. So we need, in a strong, uh, we have strong need for general purpose and assumption free big data, big data imputation tool. So, so it is very important to use this kind of uh, advanced data curing for the following machine learning and then statistical inference. So we can leverage the asymptotic property of FHDI. For the so to mimic the FAFI for large data set. So, in short, it's very brief description. But the big N data we we just call big N data as a very large, say a millions of million, multiple million uh, data set instances. But the dimensionality is not that high. That we call that big N data. And big P data, such as the biological data or DNA data, we have uh, millions of the variable, but the instances are very small. We call that big P data. But we call ultra data when the data has concurrently big N and big P. So our previous paper, the TKD, IEEE TKD paper, was about this separate big N or big P separate separate but the recent date recent paper which is under review now but our program is already uh, made public so uh, this 2021 program can deal with this uh, concurrently big n and big p data set we call that ultra large data oriented parallel fractional hot tech imputation that's why we call that up fhdi so key procedure is same, similar to the FHDI because we start from the serial version theory. So uh, process step one is parallel cell construction. So we categorize the imputation cell. But one more step, we have to select the donors. We select the donor because uh, it is high dimension. We have to use the both uh, sure independent screening and K nearest neighbor searching. Because high big P data, very high dimensionality, we have to select donor uh, using this uh, combination of SIS and KNN. Step two, so joint cell probability using the parallel expectation maximization scheme. And then we impute using the F FHDI. So we, in the serial version, we allow FAFI, but uh, for the large or ultra data, is unrealistically uh, large for using the FAFI because it uses all possible donors. It's not feasible. So uh, for UPFHDI, we use FHDI estimator only, so test parallel imputation. We allow the jackknife method, parallelized, parallelized jackknife method. 
for moderately large data. But the jackknife method also basically delete one by one to calculate the uncertainty. So uh, it's, uh, it will be too much for the ultra data. So uh, we developed the linearized variance estimation for ultra data. So this is a parallelized also, so we call the parallelized linearized variance estimation. There are some, uh, to descri describe our method, we introduce some term here, so kind of a uh, simplest proposal of the loop symbol. We make many loop in the operation. So we create a set of unique missing patterns, and then unique observed pattern, and a set of donors, and actual index of donors, so in all parallel. And then we perform the uh, joint cell probability by using parallelized expectation maximization scheme. So those are all uh, parallelized, starting from the serial algorithm. And also we perform the imputation, imputation using this parallelized algorithm. But I want to emphasize this one because the jackknife method or bootstrapping they are all uh, powerful, general, the variance estimation, but they are not uh, suitable for ultra-large data. So uh, one of our uh, investigators, Dr. Kim's uh, prior works, uh, proved that a linearized variance estimation may be helpful. So uh, we implemented this method, and we conduct a validation using 10,000 instances and 0.1 million variable with 30% missing rate. We perform the standard error, so jackknife method, and then linearized variance estimation. So we compare the AD means the, the difference, absolute difference. So as you see here, the linearized, which is simple, but the linearized variance estimation is very good mimic of the jackknife method. So um, in the, our UPFHDI for ultra data set, we use the linearized variance estimation scheme. So uh, some some part we use the uh, very obvious uh, the divide and conquer parallel algorithm as shown here B figure B, but we have many loop such as the expectation maximization scheme which is uh, uh, implicit, implicit loop. So uh, we have to tackle that one, our separate algorithm, parallel algorithm. So we combine both of them, combine both of them. And also uh, job distribution can be done uniformly. So each slave or cyclic distribution to save the, to balance the load balance of parallel processing. So this is an example of scalability of our parallel UPFHDI big, with the big N data set. So here the 1 million rows and a very small column, say 4 columns. So as we increase the missing rate 15 to 35%, we commonly found the, the uh, speed up linear, nearly ideal uh, linear speed up. So we confirm that scalability. And then we uh, show that uh, big, big N and big P algorithm here, big P data. So 10,000, 1 million, 0.1 million data set. Both shows the, although it is not uh, perfectly linear, but it shows good uh, scalability. As shown here, a blue line is a 10,000 instances and 0.1 variable, 30% missing rate. And yellow line, Yellow line shows the 0.1 million instances and 10,000 variables with 30% missing rate. We can confirm, although it is not perfect, but it shows the good scalability. So I want to briefly talk about why we need special algorithm for the big P data, because big P data literally has a lot of uh, variables, a lot of variables. So for a given missing pattern. So as you see here, two, three, one, zero. So variable four is missing, three, zero, zero. So variable uh, six, seven are missing, so on and so forth. Suppose we have, uh, uh, say, 10,000 variable, or say, one million variable. So there are 
the possible infinite, uh, nearly infinitely many uh, different missing patterns. So how can we find the donors? How can we find uh, enough donors? So comparing all variable may not be enough or may not be possible. So we use we thought we uh, investigate several uh, variable reduction method such as lasso, adaptive lasso, ridge, or scott. But uh, we found most efficient and reliable method, the computationally efficient method may be sure independent screening, so developed by Fan and Lev. So the setup is very simple. So to, using the two-step method, the idea is they compare, they compare the correlation score and then to get the good uh, probability to get the uh, true model, true model, as the n it goes to infinity. So uh, we try to use that method for the donor selection, donor selection. But uh, whenever we get the, say uh, in the many possible donors, even though we use the SIS, we have to decide decide how can we combine how can we combine possible uh, set. So we allow the intersection or union or just a global ranking based on the based on the correlation score based on SIS. And then when we compare the distance between uh, distances, we use Euclidean sense. So there may be some problem for the purely uh, categorical data set. But uh, we assume that we continuous data set or at least hybrid data set. So this kind of a global ranking using the, using the KNN will be efficient. efficient. Okay, this is a detailed explanation. So you can... Uh, can, you are referred to the related uh, paper. So one thing we had to do was that we have to modify the expectation maximization scheme because that is based on all possible possible comparison. But uh, we used SIS, so we modified the EM algorithm to leverage the SIS as, as shown here. So our updated scheme and equation are slightly changed by the SIS. So in sum, we implement the sure independent screening algorithm for donor selection and also joint cell probability estimation, EM algorithm. We all change that and also par parallelize that. So for the big P algorithm, big P data set, so uh, for example here, 1,000 and 10,000 variable 1,000 instances and 10,000 variable, and 30% missing, missingness. And we apply the SIS in combination with the KNN searching in a Euclidean sense. We confirm that very, very desirable uh, scalability. We tested many uh, data set, many practical data set. So um, examples data set are all available in the IEEE data port. Although they are gigabytes big, I say very big, but the, you can download it to check your result. And also we have a synthetic, many synthetic data to check our performance. So some, some data is a big N, some data is a big P, and then some data is continuous, some data is categorical, or some data are hybrid. Hybrid means that the data type is continuous and categorical. So uh, they are all available in the, the, market, the website. You can freely download. And then for the theory, please refer to our uh, 2020 paper and also our new paper, hopefully, will show up soon. And unlike the serial version, this uh, parallel version is uh, available. available open source you can download it but you have to compile on your local high performance computing environment we test everything on the nsf exit environment nsf exit environment so we believe we can help and we believe it is compilable and then uh, deployable on your local hpc but if you have any difficulty please contact us we we, want to, we would love to help that uh, before closing, why I want to emphasize one more time why we need this uh, F, the data curing. 
in terms of following machine learning and statistical prediction. So this, uh, this summary figure show, adapted from our previous paper on the 2019 TKDE. So we compare the same data set uh, by, by after curing FHDI or after curing naive method. So this blue color, so the, the, the following the data analysis after uh, FHDI. And green color shows the after analysis by after the naive uh, imputation. Vertical axis shows the root mean square error. GAM is one of the most powerful statistical method, non-parametric, non-parametric regression, generalized auditing model. So the impact on GAM, impact on GAM is very noticeable. So outstanding here compared to naive method. And extreme random extreme randomized tree ERT is another powerful machine learning method has a, a large impact. The FHTI has large impact. Actually, improve a lot the ERT. And also artificial neural network ANN also benefit a lot from the FHDI. FHDI. Uh, it may be a uh, data specific data specific because we use the uh, uh, not that big data here the realistic nearly 6,000 instances and 13 variable uh, from a genotype of maize hybrid yield from Dr. Lorenz group but uh, this one confirmed that data curing is very important for the subsequent machine learning or statistical inference so in summary the UPFHDI inherits all strengths of the general purpose assumption free theory of FHDI, fractional hot tech imputation. It shows a favorable speed up when you apply to ultra data set up to millions of instances and nearly 10,000 variables concurrently, concurrently. So it both shows a linear speed up, linear speed up. And UPFHDI positively improves the subsequent machine learning, including ANN. GAM, ERT, or ANN, or the deep learning style. And also, uh, UPFH is now publicly available. We share all the open sources, manuals, and examples. So we hope that all the data scientists and the broad engineering scientists can cure data without any headache. So please refer to our papers. So here, the this is the initial work. The impact. This uh, 2019 paper, our group is uh, about impact on the machine learning, machine learning, and then this uh, 2018, the R journal paper described the serial, serial version, FHDI package, and others are good sources for the uh, theory. And 2020, 2020 paper, TKDE is about uh, the. Uh, Parallel first version of the parallel fractional hot take imputation, and uh, still under review 2021 is a UPFHDI. Hopefully, it will be available in, in the near future. All the program, manual, data are all made available for the broader impact. So you can go to this website and you can download it. So you can download all the older data, program, and the manual therein.